I love this one. This product has been responsibly made. It's a toothpaste tube. Or how about this one? We care for our environment. And FYI, I'm a reusable bag. This is a plastic bag. Hello everybody, I am Lyle and welcome back to Sustainable Jungle where we share sustainability tips, tricks, track, <laughs> tips, tricks, hacks, products, brands and stories to better our planet. And today we are talking about green washing. What is it? Who's doing it? And how do you spot it? But first, let's talk about the why. Why green washing? Well, it's actually been around since the 60s and I'm not going to go into the details. So let's just say at some point in recent times, us humans started asking for better products. And so began the rise of conscious consumerism and socially and environmentally responsible brands. That's great. Fast forward to 2022 and according to a survey run by Captera, 95% of us consumers ranked sustainability as an important consideration. 84% of us had purchased an actual sustainable product in the past six months, and that was up from 67% the previous year. Even with the impacts of inflation, green purchasing is on the up, and US consumers are willing to pay more for green products too. Happy days. Except that at the end of the day, we still live in a capitalist society, which means money makes the world go around, and if sustainability sells, uh, you know, thanks to those uh, green demands from us needy, environmentally conscious consumers, then hey, let's ride that train. So the question isn't why greenwashing, but why not greenwashing? And that, my friends, uh, was the beginning of greenwashing. Probably. Now let's talk about the what. What is greenwashing? If you don't know, don't worry, like 78% of Americans and probably the rest of the world don't know what greenwashing means either. It's actually a play on whitewashing, which is using false information, marketing tactics to hide errors, crimes or scandals. Different dictionaries, yeah, they define it differently. But for us, basically, it's dishonest or defeat, deceitful marketing about a company or product's environmental impact, right? But to fully define greenwashing, you kind of have to look at both the positive and negative impacts on the planet. Usually the balance tips to the former to cover up the latter. So for example, a brand may tout its cereal as antioxidant rich, while it contains GMO soy and corn yummy. Or say a body wash that's been marketed as being made by a company that runs on solar power, but actually that's just false or grossly overstated. And say the products contain a whole bunch of petroleum derived ingredients. You know, you've reached for a carton of farm fresh eggs, or maybe you've chosen a shampoo that promises a truly organic experience. You know, it's that kind of stuff. Not really a spoiler alert, I know, but you've, you know, you've likely been duped by greenwashing. So to clarify, greenwashing is, is, is the practice of basically misleading us, those of us at, at least attempting to vote with our dollars to combat things like climate change and damaging environmental practices. But in reality, our pro-environmental choices are actually just contributing to the problem. Ugh. And these greenwashing companies, the funny thing is, they often just spend more on marketing, making us think they're offering eco-friendly products than actually just making them eco-friendly. I know there's a lot there, but you can boil greenwashing down to essentially three different types. There's misleading labels and language, which is just like unsubstantiated claims, eco-friendly, uh, green, non-toxic, you know, they aren't regulated, they can mean anything. Environmental in imagery like green or blue colored schemes, natural imagery like plants, uh, farm animals, happy farm animals. Uh, you know, they make us associate a product or brand with sustainability, but in you know, reality, there's zero eco attributes. There's also hidden trade-offs. So green advertisements of sustainable practices, recycled packaging, organic materials, zero waste practices, you know, but they don't come close to compensating for the kind of environmental damage of, of the product or company itself. Or more specifically, the former environmental marketing company called Terra Choice developed their own seven sins of greenwashing. I'm getting Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman visuals right now. But anyway, um, here are some recent examples that I love. Hidden trade-offs was the first one. Defining something as green, but ignoring their environmental impacts like uh, Starbucks. <laughs> Straw-free lids that were made of more plastic than their original straw and lid combo. I mean, that's just... Uh, or IKEA's use of beechwood, which was linked by Earthside to illegal logging in Ukraine's Carpathian region. And that was not funny because it was home to like 
endangered wolves, bears, bisons, and lynxes. No proof, which is green claims that you can't actually easily verify or even with reliable third-party certs. Uh, like uses 30% less plastic or made with naturally grown ingredients and so many companies are doing this I'm not even going to go there. Vagueness that's broad, insubstantial or convoluted claims like new and improved. Recycled materials again I'm not even going to go there. Irrelevance which is like a claim may be truthful but it's just completely unhelpful like refrigerators that are CFC free. whoop de doo CFCs were banned under the Montreal Protocol. Uh, lesser of two evils, which is like touting one good sustainability aspect while ignoring greater environmental harm. Fuel efficient SUVs, organic cigarettes, ah, that's a good one. Uh, or according to Changing Markets Foundation report, Coca-Cola, it's Coca-Cola publicly backslapping itself for capturing ocean bound plastic to use in their bottles, which is literally a drop in the bottle of the plastic filled ocean when you look at the impact of their products. Or K-Cup brands, Keurig claimed that K-Pop K cup pods could be easily recycled. No, no, they can't. And that's why they ended up paying a $10 million class action lawsuit in the US. Whoops. And last but not least, worshiping false labels. So using words and images that apply third party support. So say for example, a product being labeled as vegan uh, or as, as being accredited by vegan approved. But that acts, it's not actually a, a certifying body, isn't it? It's not a third party. It's not a, who is that? Um, <laughs> Amazon actually does a great job of this. You've seen Amazon's eco label, the climate pledge friendly badge. Well, it, you know, it's slapped on a range of products, which is supposedly certified by Amazon's own in-house compact de de by design accreditation. You know, ironically, these include single use batteries, uh, plastic bottles of passion fruit smoothie shampoo, which also contains several ingredients that have been EWG rated worst uh, and things like disposable wipes. So there's that. I know, I know, I'm painting big business as the literal devil here. Um, yeah, but look, it's not always so black and white. Admittedly, you know, nobody can actually move the green needle like biz big business can. And sometimes, sometimes they get it right and it can have a hugely positive environmental impact. My point is that this all goes to show that greenwashing is rife in every single sector. Every product category, there is some brand or company who is telling you something is eco when it's not. It's a money spinning marketing play and I don't even know, I don't even want to know how far and how deep the rabbit hole goes. Which is why it's super important to make, to take just a little bit of time to think about who you're buying from. I know greenwashing has become savvy and sneaky, but once you know how to spot it, it's way easier to avoid. So how do we do that? Well, fortunately, regulatory agencies like the FTC in the US and CEMA, uh, that's Competition and Markets Authority in the UK, they've created their own green guides or green claims code and that helps businesses with a framework of avoiding false or unsubstantiated claims. Uh, prosecutions have also stepped up a notch, but you know, since we have to rely on our own greenwashing radar like 99% of the time, what you first want to do is just apply a healthy dose of skepticism. If something seems suspicious, well, it probably is. Uh, cool marketing, attractive product labels, they're just usually red flags, not green ones. And don't be afraid to ask brands questions. Number two, check the ingredients lists for food, beauty, and skincare products. Look beyond the label. Look, it is easy for companies to lie or use vague terms. They do it all the time, but it's illegal to lie about ingredients. Make sure an organic product has ingredients you've heard of. Okay, and if you're still unfamiliar with them, uh, for personal care products specifically, you can look them up on Environmental Working Group's Skin Deep database. Number three, look for third party certifications like USDO Organic, uh, GOTS or Global Organic Textile Standard, OK Tex 100, uh, Carbon Trust Standard. A brand that has gone to the effort of obtaining a third party certificate is one of the main ways we can ensure their claims are actually legit. And there, I know, I know, there are many sustainability certifications and it's getting confusing. Uh, it, it is hard to know what each one, each claim verifies. So I'm gonna pop a link in the description below to a post we did on this topic to help you navigate that area. However, it's also worth mentioning that certification schemes themselves, even ones like B Corps and GOTS, are fallible and have sometimes themselves been known to certify some questionable brands and companies, which is why we say that certifications in conjunction with a brand's transparency and your own fact checking is like the ultimate greenwashing avoidance trifecta. A lot of effort, but it's the best proposed solution we have. So what's the takeaway here? Okay, 
what or who you choose to spend your money on says and does a lot. Mm. I know this is cliche, ugh, but voting with your dollar is, is literally the best thing you can do. So many companies bank on literally mindless consumption, but many brands actually genuinely care about sustainable business practices. And these are the companies and real environmental actions we want to support. I will add links to all the resources I mentioned below. And uh, of course, if you have any other great tips that you want to add to our little trifecta, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you did like the video. I'm Lyle from Sustainable Jungle. I'm much love and conscious consumption always, friends.